Hi guys, Andre from Conveyor of Randomness here and today I'll be showing you how to overcome a flickering issue that you may have experienced on your M1 Mac Mini. I've noticed on my Mac Mini, which I've had for almost a year now, that all of a sudden and more increasingly over the last few months or so, I'm having certain external display issues, such as display flickering, problems waking up the computer back from sleep, and in certain circumstances, a complete white noise display on the external monitor. Although at times restarting the Mac Mini has resulted in problems going away, whether that be for minutes, hours, days, or even weeks, it would eventually come back. Reading the forums on this issue, there doesn't seem to be a definitive answer as to why this happens on certain external displays and not others. But just like the Bluetooth issue, which has caused many wireless accessories to simply just not work, this display issue could be down to the M1 chip. Which means that hopefully a future software update may be able to come up with a fix to the issue. I'll show you seven quick ways that may be able to remedy the situation. You may find that some of these may work, others may not. And if you find any other ways of sorting a problem, just let me know in the comments below. First method is simply restarting your Mac. Second, just like the response that you'd get from any IT help desk, have you tried unplugging it and plugging it back in again? This is nature's DIY cure for most things. So all you have to do here is plug in whichever method of connection you've got between your Mac Mini external monitor, just unplug it and plug it back in again. The third method, disabling the setting where your Mac goes to sleep, can also fix this problem in certain circumstances. Go to system preferences, in the Apple menu and choose Energy Saver. And then you want to make sure that your Prevent Your Mac from Automatically Sleeping When the Display Is Off is unchecked. And also I've, on the Turn Display Off After, I've set it to Never, so that you might have it on certain minutes, but I've set it to Never, just to make sure that it never goes to sleep. Just take note of the warning that changing this setting gives. The fourth method, make sure that you're using the most up-to-date operating system just in case there is a future fix that is contained in the update files. You wouldn't want to miss that, especially if it sorts this problem out. The fifth method, try using a different cable. If you've got a HDMI cable that is causing a problem, just try a different one, just to eliminate or confirm whether in fact the cable is or is not the problem. If it is the case, you can just swap the cable, and if it isn't, you can just try one of the other methods. The sixth method is reducing the output refresh rate to your external display monitor. To do this, get onto the system preferences from the Apple menu, select display. As you can see, my refresh rate is set to a maximum refresh rate of 72 Hz, which is the most for this monitor in its extreme settings. But you can see I can reduce the refresh rate to 50 or 60 Hz. If you have a display which can reach higher refresh rates like 120 or 144 hertz or even higher, try reducing the refresh rate to a lower one and see if this works for you. Just remember that you'll be reducing the FPS if you do this method. So I wouldn't recommend this if you do rely on applications where every frame counts. And the final method is actually the one that has worked so far and fingers crossed for me, using a different connection method. With this Mac Mini, there are a few different methods that you can connect the computer to an external display. First, by the most popular method of HDMI to HDMI, but you can also use the Thunderbolt 3 capabilities by one of the two USB-C ports to connect to your external display through native DisplayPort, Thunderbolt 2, DVI, VGA, and HDMI using the appropriate adapters. In my case, because my external display only has a VGA and HDMI port, I wanted to retain the ability to show the output at the highest resolution possible. So I purchased an inexpensive USB-C to HDMI adapter, which so far has resulted in no problems whatsoever. Hopefully one of those seven methods worked for you. And if one did, just let me know in the comments below. And if none of them did and you found an alternative method, also let me know down there too, and share it with others who haven't been able to solve their problems with these methods. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. That's all for me today. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.